Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be book hunting, toy hunting and even a bit of record hunting in Newton Abba and uh, we also nip down to Totnes and they're uh, both situated in Devon in the United Kingdom and Newton Abba is famous in my opinion for having many many charity shops. I think there's about 12. Uh, we go into most of them. Um, I'm afraid to say it was slim pickings. <laughs> <laughs> not unusual in the charity shops. You sort of need to go into them every day. Now, this was fantastic. This is Phoenix Sounds. This is an independent record shop. Right, so here we are in Phoenix Sounds in uh, Newton Abba. I'm with the owner here. And uh, what's your name, mate? Hi, it's Roger. Roger. Hi, Roger. And um, how long have you been here at Phoenix Sounds? Uh, I bought a shop about uh, just under two years ago. So, uh, yeah moving into second year oh brilliant fantastic well it's a really really great vibrant shop there's loads to see here um now there's a lot uh, you're coming up quite soon we've got um uh, record day haven't yeah we? christmas for yeah. Us. yeah record store day which is the best day of the year fantastic yeah. vibe so yeah oh fantastic now you've got quite a variety of stuff so mm. for anyone who because there's not a lot of independent record shops around no, these no, days is there we're, uh, we're from plymouth and used to have several and mm. we've now got none mm. um so we're in newton abbott so if someone was making a special trip here what could they find well there's there's about 450 releases for record store day we'll yeah. be stocking about 330 of them um but basically all customers gave us wants lists wow, and we yeah. read up and everything and find out what what we should have as well yeah um we open at eight o'clock rather than nine on that day um, so we have a bit of a queue about 150 i reckon wow, yeah, okay. yeah. that's amazing so yeah. but we'll be doing coffee bacon rolls for the first 150 um, wow. live music <laughs> and uh dj set all day which yeah. will be uh really cool which which people in the street will be able to hear and that yeah. and uh yeah it's it's, it's, it's it's a fantastic day we love it yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's it's such a great shop it reminds me of my my one back in the 90s at mm. purple haze um although we did you know comics as well as records yeah. and that so do you have people bring like secondhand records in? we do lots secondhand yeah. um it comes in quite quite a lot um yeah and anything that we can't sell next we're we're beatles rock and pop basically yeah. um up until today what doesn't sell we, we give the charity because devon Air ambulance oh they, brilliant yeah they, yeah they, they okay. take away from us oh that's brilliant. that's cool yeah mm. right so you sent, mentioned you get lots of second hand in and you yeah. um you know put the uh the sort of stuff that you don't really need goes to the charity shop mm. have you ever had anything really juicy and what's been your best stuff that's come in um we've had a couple of uh ones. blue triangle uh Darks of the Moon. Um, okay. We've got a white label test pressing Darks of the Moon in the back, actually. A test press in a Darks of the mm. Moon, right? So, what would something like that sell for now? Um, it's very difficult to put a price on. There's not a price on it, really. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's, at the end of the day, it's what people pay for it. Yeah. Um, and we it, don't yeah. like keeping vinyl here on the shelves just to show we're a record shop. We like it to fly out. Yep. So, it's yeah. cash flow as well. So Absolutely. Turnover yeah. is, is key. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we, we tend to price things about 10% underneath the market value okay um and then second hand's negotiable isn't it so absolutely yeah <laughs> but i guess people make yeah. an offer do you ever put anything up online or anything like um, we, we we tend to put stuff in store in store for three months and if it's okay if it's over 100 pounds or close to and hasn't sold we'll we'll put it out on discogs yeah all oh, right on discogs open, open yeah. the market for it yeah okay but i know always, that that makes sense mm. yeah oh brilliant mm. um certainly there's a lot to look at mm. so if someone's coming down they got a good idea what they're going to be finding there. So brand new, all, all the like the latest stuff as well. Yeah, um, loads of vinyl. It's just uh, it's a real record. Love, love it. Place isn't it? It <laughs> is absolutely. It. It's really great, yeah. isn't it? Do you do any of the record fairs, or I guess um, you've not got time? We don't. We're in the no. book, and we, we speak to the record fair people all the time yeah. because you know it's a community really. Um, but we do speak locally with SBS yeah. Records as well, great right. second hand shop, um, and there's a few in the area that that you know, yeah. I shop at. So you know, it's, it's it's we all know each other, and we all we all visit each other's shops and show support. So, Brilliant. Yeah. Mm. And with regard to shop hours, you're open Monday to Saturday. Monday to Saturday, nine till four thirty. Brilliant. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Oh well, thanks for uh, letting us have a look around. Yeah, no around. problem. Yeah, yeah cheers, mate. Having you here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what a great uh, great record shop that was. And uh, here we are in the cancer research. So as I was saying at the start, almost all of the uh, charity shops have got a presence in Newton Abba, including a lot of the more obscure ones. And uh, my friend Andy, who came out with me, he did actually buy a uh, a CD out of Phoenix Sounds. Here's in the, the PDSA. A lot of these have got the same sort of template wherever you visit them around the country. Um, but predominantly they are stocking, you know, much more modern books, books of the last sort of 15 to 20 years not much in the way of vintage, I'm afraid to say.
but some of them have better book sections than others. Um, I spotted at least two people who were doing like us, us systematically working their way from charity shop to charity shop. And to be honest, um, wherever you live, if you're going to be going in the charity shops, unless you get lucky, you really, really need to be doing them every day. That was a bit of a, uh, a haul there. I didn't actually pick any up, but the, uh, the wreck truck there, uh, many, many versions of that. That was unusual for the matchbox. And uh, because there were such slim pickings in the charity shop, I certainly don't dwell on them, but we do sort of nip in so you've got an idea of what they're all like. Here's another one here, Age UK. I mean, they literally are relentless. <laughs> But, uh, you know, when I have spare books, for example, that I don't want, and I'm not going to be selling them, they always go to a charity shop. I never chuck anything away. I like to support them where I can. Now, this is an actual physical bookshop, West Country Books. Now, they do lots of local interest, but it's Devon and a bit of Cornwall-related local interest. So you've got books on you know, Plymouth, Exeter, uh, Dartmoor, and uh, a bit of general stock as well. But uh, really good. I mean, I, I don't know of any other shop that's got such a great local interest section. Um, really, really excellent. Some really good stuff there, as you can see. So they've got it nicely organised as well. Lots of books on Plymouth, which is my hometown. And uh, local interest used to be such a big thing in, you know, a, a brand new bookseller. Not so sure it is anymore, which is a bit of a shame. I think it, because a lot of the books are uh, self-published or published very locally, they don't work so well with chains and the chains just don't want to get involved. And if they buy them from a wholesaler, they're not getting the sort of margin that they're used to. So consequently, the books tend to not get stocked, um, which is a shame. There you go. As I said, uh, lots and lots of uh, local interest books. Great section on Dartmoor. You just don't really see such in-depth stock on one particular subject. So it's very much a template for how local interest should be done. Excellent. And the chap in there, I didn't catch his name, but very, very friendly. So uh, hello to you, sir. <laughs> Some good books there. Remember that book on Dartmoor Stones? Excellent. Remember Stan, that was only £8, a really good value for money. Remember selling that one in in my book selling days? But Newton Abbott in general, I mean, it's definitely worth a visit. There's a lot on. We particularly went on Wednesday, which is market day. So uh, I used to work in Newton Abbott every day for about a year and a half. And I was uh, managing a bookshop up there at the time. And um, I used to like market day because you could go and there'd be lots of stalls and there'd be uh, some out on the street, some inside the market as well. There's at least one or two bookshops inside the market and usually one or two stalls outside as well. And uh, you'd occasionally find the nice vintage gem. Um, but for actual second-hand bookshops, this was as close as you got in all of Newton Abbott. Uh, now we have a little run of uh, a few more charity shops. And uh, as I said, if you're checking them every day, you will have eventually, you're going to hit hit gold and you'll come up with something. But, you know, even trying to find, you know, a Picador pre-2000 was impossible in the entire town, which is a bit of a shame. It's just how it's gone. It's just your standard modern fiction and celebrity biography. It's, uh, yeah. But I guess that must be what sells. But th the thing is, in a lot of the cases with the charity shops, the volunteers, they get a box of old books. They think, well, there's nothing we can do with that. We can't sell them. They're old. And they just get recycled or, or binned, unfortunately. Which is a shame, but, you know. I've helped out where I can, you know, when shops have had record collections in or book collections in, I try and help out at my local cancer research. But, you know, some of the charity shops won't even take books anymore. Amazingly, they will not take them. 
It's a sad old state of affairs, I'm afraid to say. But as you can see, if you've got a new and Abbott and you're looking for something to read, the average price of these is one to two pounds a book. Now, this is one of the odd stalls outside the pannier market. It books like 50p or three for a pound. So once again, plenty here. Nobody buying, I'm afraid to say. But there was plenty available should you want it. And then we went into the uh, indoor market, the pannier market. No second-hand book stalls left. There's a stall send DVDs and Blu-rays and video. This is the most interesting stall. They had loads of these vintage button badges, some new stuff as well. Some very interesting ones there that Andy spotted. Um, yeah, quite the mixture. Not expensive, a pound each. I mean, the Hulk one there, the Hulk who loops. It's pretty cool. And they did some sort of new badges and patches as well. And that was the highlight of the entire market. So not great. So we thought, well, we better get to uh, Ogwell Toys and Antiques, which is where we wanted to go. We were very much looking forward to visiting Tony. And uh, we uh, we gave the charity shops a bit of a break <laughs> since they yielded literally nothing. And I was quite keen to uh, to get to Tony's place. But yeah, mad. Oh, we had one more charity shop. Yeah, I think this was on the way. Animals in Distress. And uh, these actually weren't too bad. The actual quality of the books was pretty good. And you can sort of see with this abundance of good quality books, why would they stock the old stuff, you know? Uh, this is another a great charity shop, Hannah's, and um, a pile of Beano's there, there's some comics. My friend uh, Andy bought that wire box set you can just see there. It's only a fiver for the complete wire. I mean, it's pretty good, isn't it? Great, great show. And this was a pretty, I, I mean, I'm amazed I never got anything out of all the charity shops. I thought I was bound to find something, but it just, it was just nothing, nothing vintage really, nothing that tickled my eye that I fancied at all. Not the end of the world. But you see, there's plenty there, plenty there. So here we are. This is uh, Ogwell Toys and Antiques. Hello. So I'm here with Tony Hall of Ogwell Antiques and Vintage Toys. So Tony, we've had a lovely look around the store, and we've met before at the toy fairs. So we have indeed, Jim. Yeah. In. Um, and um, I've picked up a few Matchbox toys, and uh, Andy got a few diecasts. So really nice packed shop here, and definitely worth. If you're coming to Newton Abbott or you're in the Devon area, definitely worth popping in to see what's around. So. Um, how long have you been here then, Tony? In this particular shop, I've been here about five and a half years, but yeah. um, I started off many years ago just collecting as, hmm. a, as a collector, like we all are, collecting yeah. Corgi. Right. And um, I then decided to start doing toy fairs. Yeah. Um, and I actually started off many years ago at the Brunel train shed in Bristol when oh, right. the toy fair used to be down in the platform. Hmm. Oh, of, well, of the well, old yeah. Brunel train shed. So you walked Brilliant. in on platform and then walked down into where the railway tracks were, wow. where they used to do the uh, engine repairs. Oh, fantastic. So yeah. started doing that and then a lot of other toy fairs. Then I um, I was in a family business in the mm. motor trade for 33 years. Right. And then we opened a depot in Devon, mm. which is what brought me to this area from uh -huh. Bristol, as yeah. you could probably tell from my accent, I'm yeah. Bristolian. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we... Uh, then I, I was in a, a kind of retail center with mm -hmm. a, a few other people just with a, a small area yeah. with this sort of stuff and then decided I would uh, leave the family business which uh, like I say I was in for 33 years in, in the vehicle yeah. electrics and uh, right. decided to come into this. Okay because you still got uh, interest in sort of motorsport. Yeah thing, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. We, we, we st the, our family do motorsport in yeah. actual fact I've, oh, I've got a great nephew who is at the moment in the JCW Mini Challenge which follows ah. the um, touring car around the country. Oh brilliant oh that's fantastic. And, uh, so in the shop here um, you've got you have got a bit of everything. I mean, you've got plenty of Matchbox, which is why I, I like it. But you've got some action figures. Not, I wouldn't say loads, but you've got like a runner yeah. action force there. Um, uh, you've got lots of die cast. You've got the lovely cabinets with the Corgi Dinky uh, stuff in the more collectible stuff as well. Yeah. Um, uh, a bit of train stuff. You've got a Playmobil. It is sort of everything, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The stock changes quite often because yeah. I, the stock 
everything that's in here is walk through the door mm, okay, in yeah. some way or another. So it's either somebody who's phoned me yeah. um, and I've gone to have a look at a collection or it's somebody that's just come in with a small box of items. So, Understood, yeah. um, so I have had, you know, situations where I've got loads of Action Man. Right, um, you had like a collection. I had a big collection come in of Action oh, Man. So it could yeah. be Action Man, Star Wars, Action Force. Um, right. You never know what's, what's going to come in, do you? No, yeah. and as That's you sure know is, from yeah. the back of the shop there, from some of the videos yeah. you did earlier, they, I, I, I did do general antiques at one time, yeah. but I am very motor orientated. So I also used to sell a lot of Formula One items. I make right. um, Formula One wheels into coffee tables okay. and sell yeah. rear wings and stuff. Yeah. I'm very low on stock of anything like that at the moment. Right. I've got a Formula One wheel nut here at the oh, moment, and we've is, got yeah. Nigel Mansell. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I saw him there. <laughs> over here at the moment, and I've got a lot. I've got a few bits of signed Nigel Mansell stuff. Um, but yeah, we we like the enamel signs, which yeah. is sort of motoring orientated. Very nice. Yeah. Um, I've got the the large ship models. So there's yeah, a little bit for the for they? somebody who's in marine. They're one two hundred scale. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I I mean, really, if you've got a shop like this, you have to have a little bit of everything because. Yeah. Um, well, well, it's nothing I, like I, it, really. You know, I mean, um, not with this level of old toys, even in Plymouth. There, no, there isn't. no. There used to be, yeah, but um, there just isn't anymore. I'm afraid I think it's because it doesn't really pay. <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> this, so. This, for me, is a bit of early semi-retirement, yeah. which is which is why I do it. I very much enjoy it. I'm yeah. surrounded by the things I love, um, and I still get the... Um, a lot of the time for collectors, I think you'll find that um, it's the finding, mm. not the having. Yeah, and I still get the, the finding yeah. bit. I still yeah. get because people come in the door with a big box of stuff that looks absolutely yeah. nothing yeah. when you look at it, a big box of stuff. But when you start separating it out and cleaning it up and going yeah. through it, it's you find you've got some really lovely items. Oh, so I still get that enjoyment. Oh, brilliant. Now, if someone was coming down, um, I mean, I, a quick look on Google gives the shop opening hours, doesn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. So, but what, what is it, Monday to Saturday? Uh, no, Tuesday uh, it's to Tuesday Saturday? to Saturday, right, 10 okay. till 4. Sure, um, Sunday and Monday. The yeah. best parking for people, although it is advised to double check the um, parking meter, but normally Asda is free. Absolutely, that's where we um, park just And now, it's very, yeah. very close. It's within a couple of hundred yards. Yeah, fantastic. If you park in Asda, walk towards the clock tower, then that's where you'll find me. You, you but please do it, yeah. double check the meters. Um, Absolutely. Even if they do charge you, then normally if you buy something for £10 in the Asda store, then you get your money back that's it exactly right um, and that, i've also got a cafe right yeah. next to me as well so if, okay. if if you if you sort of come into the town and you've walked around a bit then there is a cafe next door and they do they will give me a bit of discount on coffee and uh -huh. tea so um okay uh, <laughs> if, if you make a large purchase then i'll obviously buy a tea or coffee for you at oh, the same brilliant. time oh that's fantastic and of course uh, we first met at the local Exeter at Matford and the Shepton. Players. That's right, yeah. Um, and I know you don't do quite all of them, but you, no. you're often there, aren't you? So, yeah, um, yeah, I am. Um, more so in the winter period. So yeah. I, I would stop doing toy fairs now because I find the footfall isn't big enough in the summer. Yeah. But certainly from September onwards, yeah, I do Shepton, do Mallet, oh, Matford. Yeah. I used to do West Point, which obviously okay, doesn't yeah. exist anymore. So, yeah, the oh, local, right. local area ones. Um, I'd love to be able to go and do Stone Lee or something, but yeah. there's just so many costs involved in doing a Absolutely. big one a like big that show, yeah. when it's out of your area and you can't come back no so. well i'll put your details and stuff if people want to contact you and i've got your card as well i'll pop that in the description in the video yeah brilliant below. thank but you yeah, very thanks much for, thanks for having us today thanks Jenny. for coming along and thank you for talking to me no worries cheers mate and uh, now we've driven down the road to Totnes, very close to newton abbott and we're visiting castle books uh, Totnes is a lovely little town and um, it's got a huge main area fourth street and um filled with charity shops and we really went in an odd one and uh, there was nothing in it so we just didn't have time to go up and down the town to do them all but this is a proper sort of second-hand bookshop it's been here a long time castle books um they are once again fighting for their survival and um, here's a little bit of history about castle books if you want to pause the video and have a little read but it's uh been a sort of hub for for books for over 50 years but uh, yeah, they are feeling the pinch like everyone else and uh, fighting for their survival. But the prices were not expensive and they actually had you know, decent stock and plenty of it, um, which was uh, a delight to see after the day I'd been having. <laughs> There's a few collectibles as well. Not many, just a few. It's, it's just very much a reader's bookshop with um, you know, at re with old books at reasonable prices. I think it's probably the best way to describe it.
and uh, yeah, some nice stuff in there. As you can see. Quite nicely uh, sectioned out. See the children's books there. Some classics. I did spot a couple of odd puffins here and there, but they're ones that I already had. Um, the same went for the, the, the vintage penguins. There's nothing there that I didn't already have, sadly. Interesting little bod book there. I didn't see how much that was, but they're pretty scarce. I'm going quite close there. Let's see what they've got. But yeah, they've um, the bookshop is struggling for its existence. And um, there was another one, a, a three-story one, yeah, Ashburton. And we looked it up and the Google entry read, sadly, this bookshop, like so many, has now closed. I thought, oh, this is, uh, this is terrible. I mean, all the ones in Honiton that we visited last year are still trading. And we may still get there because it's only March now. Um, we may still get there this year to revisit Honiton. I'd like to go up at least once a year. So I might do that. Um, but the Ashburton Bookshop, which was a huge sh shop on three floors, has gone, which is a, a shame. Another one. Um, there's only really one decent second-hand bookshop in all of Plymouth. Um, so that their numbers are dwindling, unfortunately. It's quite, quite clear to see. I don't know quite how we can save them, except, you know, buy as many second-hand books from bookshops as you can, really. While they're still around. They've got a few bits behind glass here, some of their slightly more collectible paperbacks and um, hardbacks. We've got a few sections, um, a few little bits of penguin um, sectioned out. But decent fiction sections. These are all like £152. I mean, very, very reasonably priced, I thought. Yeah, nice mixture of stuff. Some decent literary authors there. So I had high hopes that I was going to find at least one or two picadors, and I did actually buy a couple of books from this this bookshop. So the day wasn't a complete write off, <laughs> but I was beginning to think it was going to be. And uh, well, both Andy and I bought some bits from Tony at Oldwell as well, which we'll see in a moment. There was a little smattering of. Uh, of penguins, but not much. But yeah, if you're ever in Totnes, this is the destination. This is the shop you need to get to. Um, obviously, as I said, loads of charity shops up there, but make a point of getting to this one, really. Um, but yeah, this was our last sort of stop on a very packed day. We managed to get an awful lot in. All of that, believe it or not, took about six hours <laughs> before we were really done. But uh, yeah, it was worth it. So thanks to Andy for coming along. A little bit of science fiction by the door here, but all quite sadly low grade. Brilliant as readers, but um, a bit on the low grade if you were a collector. I saw uh, New Maps from Hell, which is a four square science fiction I'm after with Kingsley Amos. But it was a first printing right on the left there, but just hammered. And since Andy's not with me today doing this commentary, these are the three cards that he got from Tony. I believe these cost £40 for the three. I think he did very well there. Lovely, lovely, nice uh, die casts. Okay, so these are the two books that I picked up on my travels. So um, I got one Virago modern classic. Now, I have got a bit of a soft spot for these and um, I have got some authors I've got literally complete. So this is uh, a couple of pounds. It's uh, These are early ones are numbered. It's number 303, this one. And uh, it is a first printing from uh, 1988. First Virago printing of that one. And uh, I picked up this one. Now this is, a, it is a white spined picador. Um, it is actually after my period. So I'm trying to pick up pre-1990 
and this one is uh, in the 2000s but it was signed yeah charles nickel so i picked it up because he was a signed one um this picador 1993 there we are so yeah so 1990 i think is uh, my cutoff point although the white spines themselves stopped around the year 2000 so i'll only go past 1990 if it's one of the ones that it, it, it's, it's something a little bit more unusual and being signed i thought well they're definitely worth picking those those couple up so that was from castle books in totnes um, and from tony i picked up a few die casts so um, i picked up four matchbox cars and one Corgi Jr. So the Corgi Jr., um, I am trying to pick up some of the different um, Co uh, Kojak Buick cars. And this is one version. He gave us discount of all of these. So it's a little 22. He gave it to me, I think, for about 16 or 17, which I thought was pretty good. So there's that one. There's a version with Telly Savalis on. It's like a larger card. And there's a couple of variants on that one. But that was quite nice. I've got a little Renault here. There's, once again, there's many variants of these. But I was pleased to get that one. Um, couple of earlier ones this is uh so these are sort of mid mid to late 60s on those two and uh the rather cool beach buggy which i've been after for quite a while it's a, a late 60s one so that was my little haul as well which was i didn't think was too bad at all you know so it's pretty pretty cool so there you go so i hope you've uh, enjoyed that little tour of newton abbott i would say well you know the charity shops take you could just get lucky on the day but on the whole you know, is it worth it? You'll have to be the judge on that one. But thank you for coming along with us for today's trip around Newton Abbott. Thanks to Andy for coming along and being the co-pilot. Um, if you've enjoyed today's video, do please give it that thumbs up. If you've not already, do please hit the subscribe button for regular vintage book toy content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.